What's my favorite? Are you serious? You're gonna try to make me choose? Welcome to Vlogmas. I am answering tons and tons of y'all's questions Monday through Friday between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And this has been really fun. One, I've loved all the questions. And two, um, just the comments. The comments have been super fun to read, even though I don't get to answer most of them because I've been hard at work at doing this. Um, I am loving this and I seems like you guys are loving it. And if you are appreciating this, make sure you like this and then also like more comments, more questions, because we're going to keep this going all the way until we get to Christmas time. So today's question, let's get into it, is from Reese without a spoon, which can we appreciate the username? <laughs> oh my goodness. She asked, what's your favorite plant you've grown to date? Oh, and I just sat here and I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to pick? So I started making a list. And of course, you know, it wasn't going to be one. I'm not going to just give you one favorite plant. I'm going to give you lots of favorite plants. So this will hopefully help you because there's a theme when it comes to some of my favorite plants is they tend to be flowers, specifically native flowers. So that's what we're talking today. We're gonna to talk about 10 gorgeous native flowers that you can add to the garden. I was gonna say wildflowers, but technically all of them aren't wildflowers. So you're gonna get a little bit of this and that, and they're all cute and I like them a lot. And you should add them to your garden because they're so pretty. And also wildlife likes them too, but they're so pretty. So when it comes to my favorite this year, like a lot of times when I talk about native plants, I'm like, oh, it has this benefit for wildlife. And this one has this benefit for wildlife and it does this and maybe it's medicinal and maybe it's edible and all sorts of benefits and this plant i mean it like the pollinators like it but the reason i like it is it's just pretty i just like it because it's pretty i like its color i like before it starts to blossom i like when it blossoms i like when the blossom fades i just think it's really pretty and if you guys have watched the channel enough you might be able to guess which one it is and it is Marsh Rattlesnake Master. And if you're new to the native game and you're thinking, I have never heard of that, don't worry, I hadn't heard of it until recently. And actually one of the native nurseries I go to had it, I saw it, I looked into it a little bit and I was like, I want that. I want that a lot. So I got it this summer and I have not regretted it. I think it's so pretty. Marsh Rattlesnake Master, why is it so pretty? One, it's one of the few flowers that's kind of got more of a true blue blossom and that's cool. And two, it's kind of got a cone ball shape. Like it's one of those plants that someone could use in a movie to be on some alien planet. Cause it's just different looking. And I think that's cool. I like that. It's just so different. And I honestly want to get more of it. <laughs> but then one of my other, other favorites, which is not just my favorite this year, but it's been my favorite since last year when I first started adding it to the garden. And a bunch of you can guess it. Cause every time I do, a native planting in a sunny areas uh it's always in it can you guess it down below i'm sure a few of you are like is that yellow flower yes yes it is it is that yellow flower it is coreopsis leavenworthy common name we don't like the common name the common name is leavenworth's tixi which terrible name ew you would think this is this like ugly icky icky what a name tixi Ugh not representative of this flower. That's why I always call it by its scientific name, Coreopsis Leavenworthy, because it's so cute. I love how it gets that little yellow kind of daisy-ish flower with the black center. There's also, was it Coreopsis Lancelata, which is really similar, but it's got the yellow center versus, but I like the contrast of the yellow with the black in the middle. But I just love how it gets those, like, it has those, if you don't, I mean, you can look at my videos. I have it around a lot, but it has that really thin stalk. And then what happens is, is that like when the wind blows, they're just like so happy and bouncy. And so even though one flower is only this big, you get lots of them. And mine's been blooming from that project. I mean, we went through blooms from March, maybe even late February. As soon as the cold snap stopped, it started blooming. Actually, I think it was even blooming in the cold. Might've been even blooming in the cold. It's one of those ones that blooms most of the year. And the thing is, is like, I know sometimes wildflowers can kind of freak people out because it's like, you got to plant the seeds each year and then it blooms and then it like dies and that maybe doesn't look very cute. And then you got to chop it down and then hopefully the seeds come back up. Um, but what's really cool about Coreopsis leavenworthi because of the way it like lets its seeds fall is that it goes up, it gets very bushy, not bushy. The flowers get full lots of little flowers and then they kind of like fall over and it opens up the middle so for a minute you're like Ooh, what do i do about that but that's okay because then more come up and then they fall so they're really cute and this one i've actually used it as cut flowers in the house so like on mother's day 
do a little bit of that and put them in a vase. Very, very pretty. Next one. It doesn't bloom all year, but when it does bloom, it's very, very pretty. It was my first year having it this year and I was very excited. Actually, there's a whole bunch of these. This is my first year doing them and I've been enjoying them a lot. And this one was Blazing Star. Man, when that bloomed, oh my gosh. I don't even know if I got enough footage of it this year, but it was so pretty. And then like the fact that the hurricane made them all lean on the ground didn't make them like look as awesome as they could look. But next year, what I'm really thinking is if I've got a lot of Coreopsis around it and some of these other more substantial wildflowers that they're gonna have some stuff to lean on. Kind of like what I did back there with my goldenrod. So Feel like i got a game plan for it but that oh they were more than a golden rod even and well also like you might want to do golden rod golden rod's a good one amazing star the purple on it and just how full and dramatic it was i don't know if it was my graceful or my elegant blazing star because i could never remember which one it was but whichever one it was was super pretty super super pretty strong purple color and i think it's one of those things like um with golden rod where most of the year you're just not going to notice that you put it in the middle of other plants and it's just gonna grow and grow and grow. But then once that bloom fills in in the fall, ooh, is that pretty. Oh, it's just so pretty. And what's cool about that one is when it fades, like it's got such a vibrant purple, but then when it fades, it started kind of going to more of like a lilac, which I also thought was really pretty. I thought that was pretty. I don't know, you should get some of that too. I've been wanting it for like over a year, two years maybe, and I finally got some and I did not regret it. We're gonna put a lot of these pretty ones. Oh yes, and right now, Climbing Aster. I've talked about it a lot lately because it's in bloom and it is so pretty. Actually to the point where Ben and I, you might think us crazy, we're talking about putting on this trellis on the side that gets too much shade for vegetables. Cause it doesn't, cause that's one of the things is all the ones I've named up to this point, like Full Sun, but uh, what's that one called? Climbing Aster, that one can deal with semi shade to sh like kind of like your medium to light shade and then you're gonna get all these flowers and it has a light scent. And of course the bees love it. Um, but it actually like, it's a plant that like you go from being like, it looks green most of the year. And then right in the winter time when a lot of stuff is fading, <gasps> so pretty, pale purple, really nice. Um, and then I think, oh, someone was asking me about climbing aster. Do you need to have it right next to a water source? Cause in, in nature in our native ecosystems, it kind of grows along like waterways, water areas. I don't know want to say that. Um, mine's near sprinklers, so it does fine. I don't live near a lake or a canal or anything. So um, I just, anything, and that's one of my tricks with some of these um, marshy -er or like edge of water ones is I just put them near sprinkler heads and then I let my sprinklers run a couple times a week and that seems to be good enough for them. <laughs> and there's a few of these on this list which kind of like uh, a moister, moister? moist soil <laughs> and that's how it might trick for them so the swamp um swamp marsh rattlesnake climbing aster and this next one beach mist flower they're all near sprinkler heads so that they can maintain their moist nature versus some of the beach flowers that i have so definitely climbing aster and but this one you need like a trellis or something for it to grow on because otherwise it likes to climb it's in the name but let's talk about the next one, which is beach mist flower. So beach mist flower, I have, you know how many times I've tried to make this plant grow? I don't even know. It is one that likes some, does not like full sun. It likes kind of a semi shade, but not too dark of a semi shade. It's kind of like on the light end of semi shade. So mine's between the flower bushes over here and it is doing amazing. Hi butterfly. It's doing amazing over there. Um, I really like this one because it's got a very unique purple color. So where like a lot of times you'll get like lilacs or pale purples or kind of like a magenta purple. Um, this purple, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's like almost like a fluorescent purple. That's the best way I could say it. Not even a flu fluorescent purple, like a purple blue. It's unique and I really like it. It's endangered in the Keys, but people sell it in native stores. And um, this is not just your typical mist flower. This is beach mist flower. And it just has this very distinct purple blue to it, which I think is pretty cool. Bees like it, butterflies like it. I think all these, I think everything on this list, we can just say bees and butterflies like, I won't keep repeating it <laughs> unless there's something really particular about it. But overall, the bees and the butterflies like all these plants, so. Oh, well, a classic. If you're in a native plant, it's a classic, which most of us, I think, start with, which is firebush. Love firebush. This one I do like because of more, I like the way it looks, 
but I really like what it does for wildlife. So this will be one of the ones that maybe not, the flowers aren't as gorgeous. That's not true. The flowers aren't as noticeable from a distance, but when you're close to it, that coral red trumpet, very pretty. And butterflies love it. That's one that like, if you are like, I want butterflies in my garden, get firebush. Easy plant, it's a shrub. That's it right there. Um, so you can't see the flowers from a distance, but once you get kind of a few feet away, you'll definitely see them and they're really pretty. But what's really pretty about this one, not from a blossoming standpoint, but once we hit winter time, this will get a really pretty red leaves. Um, almost think poinsettia, it's really pretty, really pretty. That's kind of my whole thing with this. They're all pretty and you should get them. So firebush is a really good one. Of course, bees like it, butterflies like it, and birds like it, and hummingbirds like this one. And so if you have an area where hummingbirds can get to, my house is a little hard for hummingbirds to get to, but that, that's always it. And kind of in the tropical look, because firebush I feel like has a very tropical look, is privet senna. I just got one this year. Those flowers, they're yellow flowers, but they're not like a daisy flower. These definitely look like they could have come out of like Hawaii or the South Pacific. Very tropical looking, very pretty. It's also the host plant to um, a bunch of our yellow butterflies in Florida. So if you want yellow butterflies, just put one of those in because they have been increasing the amount in my yard because of that plant. Very pretty. And then another one, um, dotted horse mint. Dotted horse mint's great. It's edible, it's medicinal. You can use it as an herb substitute. Bees like it, butterflies like it, everybody likes it. They all like it. And it's pretty. I think because it's so substantial, um, where a lot of times wildflowers can be very small and very seasonal. This is another one that's like pretty substantial and it grows a huge part of the year. When I've done the look up on like when it's supposed to bloom, I feel like sometimes it shows a pretty small time period. I might not be remembering that correctly, but in my yard, it has gone spring, summer, and fall. It kind of like will put a kind of similar to some of the other wildflowers. It'll put out stuff, it'll kind of fade, and then it'll come again again. And then I threw this on there more because I like the function of it. I can't say I really like the flowers that much because they always get eaten. <laughs> That's swamp milkweed. Swamp milkweed is a much beloved plant for all my monarch caterpillars. So I really like that because they're cute. And since this video is really about what's pretty and what's cute, I would say swamp milkweed. <laughs> the, plant the plant doesn't look cute. It looks like a stick half the year. And then the leaves look very sad towards the end of the year. And when it does flower shortly after all the caterpillars eat it. So from the pretty side, the plant doesn't look great, but the caterpillars are super cute. So I really like that and my kids really like it. So I had to go on a favorite list because who doesn't like having monarch caterpillars? Who doesn't like having monarch butterflies? I mean, you've probably seen them. They're kind of flying around a little bit right now, which is crazy because it's December, but hey, the milkweed's kind of half dying back right now for me. And then some others that I really like the look of, but sometimes they get annoying. <laughs> so, fire beware. I feel like this is going to take me beyond 10, but Dune Sunflower and Sunshine Mimosa. These are ground covers. Both have really pretty flowers, but because they are semi-aggressive ground covers, they can get out of control. So Sunshine Mimosa, if you've never seen it, it looks like, again, it's another one like <laughs> it would be on a movie for an alien planet because it looks like a little puff. Uh, think Lorax trees. And it's like fluorescent pink and it's really pretty and um bumblebees like it carpenter bees like it i don't really see the smaller bees on it and i don't really see butterflies on it but it's a really good ground cover actually most of what you see behind me on the ground is sunshine mimosa but once it's kind of in like you're kind of in so that's why i say buyer beware and dune sunflower dune sunflower i mean there's sunflowers that look like about that size it's also a ground cover it is also very aggressive when it grows so it fills in a lot of areas so you better be sure you want it but if you have an area for it to cover a pretty big area i would say yes definitely get it and honorable mention pushing your expectations of what pretty looks like is the salt and pepper everglade square stem that one i bought it because i was like i think the bees will like it i put it in and it is looking amazing it's actually been really I mean, it's going strong. I, I'm wondering if it's going to make it through the cold snaps. It's definitely a wildflower that's going to challenge people to, yeah, because it, it's closer looking to what people consider weeds. So I could see how people might be like, but if you want that 
You know what? If you want like that English cottage look, this is one of those plants. Yeah. Wait a minute. That can't be my whole list because I'm looking at one of the other ones I really like this year. That's coneflower. I really like coneflower. And Stokes Aster. And Black Eyed Susans. Did I forget to write all these down? Oh, man. So I also like Black Eyed Susans and Stokes Aster and Purple Coneflower. And I like the vanilla plant when it was blossoming. Cardinal flowers I've got mixed feelings on. All oh, the celestial. Why are you trying to make me pick a favorite, Reese? Why? Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I think I gave you more than 10. <laughs> so look at two. Um, and if you have a question that you would like it answered, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. I'm going to be doing answering questions between... Thanksgiving, Christmas, Monday through Friday, and I still have some open spots. And of course, even if I don't get to your question as one whole video, I will answer it in a roundup video. So make sure you leave those below. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.